The following presentation covers the installation instructions for V switches type CBV and VEE disconnect switch. Also for operation mechanisms for R14C, CSB, and EE. The following presentation shows an installation setup for demonstration purposes only and is not a live installation. The spacing between the phases may not be correct. Note that all products from Morpac are thoroughly tested for operation and inspected through a quality control process prior to packaging and shipping. When receiving the switch or switches, prior to signing off shipper's paperwork, inspect the entire crate for significant damage as well as making sure the accessory package is sealed and intact. Once visual inspection is complete, release the shipper and open the crate to retrieve the accessory package and its contents. Therein, you should find several parts along with an inventory list and applicable accessories. Verify using the inventory list or bill of materials as cross-reference to verify that you have received all components as stated. If anything is missing, please notify Morpac immediately. Do not remove the phases at this time. Leave them intact within the crate for protection until they are ready to be installed. Also, if your switch comes delivered with protective material around the insulators, it is recommended to leave this material on for protecting against chip damage until installation is complete. Phases are shipped mounted on their associated base and already have been factory adjusted for the major adjustments in function. On the CBV or VEE phases, there are no adjustments necessary whatsoever. They have been fully adjusted and configured at the factory. If you determine that a component is loose due to rattling during shipping, please notify Morpac immediately. Do not attempt adjustments without contacting Morpac first. Our demonstration installation shows the phases with optional whips installed. An alternative option may include arc horns. Typically, the arc horns or whips are pre-installed and adjusted for proper functionality at the factory. In either case, it is important to test the opening and closing of the whips or arc horns respectively for proper contact and release during operation on all three phases. This testing is done solely to ensure that there are no issues regarding loosening or misadjusting during shipping. The following testing of the optional arc horns or whips is recommended to be done prior to installing the phases in their final destination. It may require two people to operate the phase for testing the resistance of the arc horns or whips once installed. One person should hold the phase in place so it doesn't fall over as the other person or the tester manually opens and closes the phase while monitoring the friction as well as functionality of the arc horns or the whips. The key points to observe in this testing phase related to the optional whips are 1 that when closing, the whip closes with the straight rod side getting correctly captured by the catch, ensuring proper connection and alignment when closing. Two, and when opening, that there is proper connection via friction until it springs apart. The key points to observe in the testing phase regarding the optionally installed arc horns are the two rods connect and slide with good uninterrupted friction when closing, and vice versa when opening, hence slightly springing apart from each other in a snap-like fashion. It is important to make sure that in either case, the whips or arc horns maintain a light but firm pressure throughout the length of their stroke or travel. In either case, adjustments can be made after installation by simply bending the arc horns to fine-tune the contact pressure as mentioned prior. The ultimate goal is to make the phases open and close, maintaining an uninterrupted connection of the whips and or arc horns after the switch contact points disconnect until the intended disengagement of the whips and or arc horns. As stated, the settings, adjustments, and installation of either the whips or the arc horns are typically done at the factory and should need no adjustments. In rare cases where the whips or arc horns are not pre-mounted, 
They will be attached to each phase along with proper markings for correct installation as was done and tested at the factory. Now that you have completed some initial testing of the arc horns or the whips, as the case may be, it is also highly recommended to install the clevises on all three phases while the phases are still at ground level. This will be an easier installation than doing it after the fact when the switch or the phases are installed in the elevated position. Assuming you have mounted and installed all three phases of the switch, and align them correctly by making sure they are parallel to each other and set at the same position laterally and are fully closed, the installation of the interface pipes that connect the three phases for operation to the outboard bearing crank should easily slide into the clevises of each phase. It is highly recommended to insert the interface pipes while all phases are in the closed position. As shown in our installation, there are two interface pipes. Please be aware that your individual installation may vary. Clevises may look different and the phase pipe may consist of one single pipe or two pipes as shown in the installation of this video. Please refer to your specific installation blueprints for details regarding your particular installation. As a first step, Simply slide or insert the first pipe that connects the first two phases by sliding it through the clevises of the first two phases. Slide the pipe through each clevis of the first and second phase so that they are tied together. In our installation there is a hinge double clevis in the middle or second phase. Insert this pipe through only one clevis. Please note, this double clevis is unique to our demonstration and may not apply to your installation. The second or hinged clevis on the second phase will hold the second pipe going to the third phase. As stated, now insert starting from the third phase, the second interface pipe to connect the third and second phases using the hinged clevis on the second phase. Make sure you leave enough of a gap between the two pipes that meet at the middle phase in the hinge double clevis so that the action of opening or closing the phases does not jam the two pipes into each other. This was originally designed to compensate for any misalignment between the phases which may occur on wood structures. If you have a single pipe installation, then simply slide the pipe through all three clevises of all three phases. Do not tighten or insert the set screws on any of the phase clevises yet. This will be done as a final step and after all adjustments are made. However, do tighten the bolts on the clevises themselves to hold the two pipes in place. It is not necessary to shorten any of the pipes as any overhang past the third phase is normal and is usually taken into consideration at the factory for your particular installation. You can always reference the blueprint or bill of materials for more information or reference. Now you may insert the outboard crank mechanism to the interface pipe by again inserting the interface connection pipe to the outboard crank and to the interface pipe assembly. Again, tighten the clevis on the outboard crank, but do not insert the set screw yet. When connecting the outboard crank pipe to the interface pipe, it is best to do this while all phases are in the closed position. As an initial configuration, the outboard crank pipe should be slid into the outboard bearing clevis so that the position of the outboard crank is in an over toggle closed position as well. In either case, it will not be necessary to cut or shorten the outboard crank pipe. Get ready for operation of the switch and its three phases. As a quick overview of this process, you will be making adjustments in three possible locations to achieve a proper working mechanism. They are 1. The clevises on each phase, 2. The outboard crank radius adjustment, if necessary. This is commonly set at the factory but may be adjusted as needed. And 3. The swing handle stop adjustments. All three of these adjustments will allow for proper operation of the entire switch. It is important to note through this process that visual inspection during this process is extremely important as one does not want to overstress any component by force. 
Relying purely on the feeling of resistance at the swing handle is not advised, as this can be and usually is very deceiving and may cause damage to various components on the switch or linkages throughout. Open the switch while being careful not to overstress the linkages. The goal is to get all three phases to open up to the open stop position and close properly to the close stop position while also inducing a slight over toggle lock in each position. This may be achieved by several clevis adjustments on each phase. After adjustments are made, the outboard crank should over toggle in one or both the closed and open positions. In essence, lock itself into place as shown. If your installation design does not achieve a full 180 degree swing handle rotation, then the over toggle may occur or be desired in the open or closed position. At the same time, the swing handle usually should achieve a 90 to 180 degree swing depending on your specific installation, plus 1 to 2 degrees to compensate for the over toggle in both the open and closed position or in just the closed position if your installation is only a 90 degree swing. To help determine the degree of swing for your specific installation, please refer to your bill of materials and or blueprints. Ensure that on each phase, when in the closed position, the coordination of the crank stop and the stops that restrict the open and closed positions are synchronized. While doing a trial opening, be careful to not overstress the linkages if the open position stops engage before a complete 90 or 180 degree turn of the crank occurs. For more or less travel of the swing handle and to achieve the over toggle of the outboard crank, the adjustment must be made by changing the radius of the outboard crank, should final adjustments be necessary. As stated, this is usually already preset at the factory. Start with the closed position and mark or adjust the first radial stop. Then proceed to the open position and mark or rotate the second stop to the correct position. Repeat these steps as necessary until proper adjustments are achieved. Tighten the U-bolts on the clevis on the outboard crank to finalize the open and closed position. Once you have achieved the proper travel on the phases, the outboard crank over toggle in both the open and closed positions, the swing handle rotation of 90 or 180 degrees depending on your specific installation, and all clevises as well as any outboard crank adjustments being fully tightened down, you are now ready for the final step. Make sure the phases are all fully closed. Retrieve the drill guide bolt from the white satchel that is included within the accessory parts. Locate each phase's pipe connection clevis, the outboard crank clevis, and the swing handle, and follow this step by step for each clevis. Remove the piercing screw from the clevis. Insert the drill guide bolt into the piercing screw hole as this will now help cleanly guide your 1132nd drill bit. Drill hole completely into pipe. Remove the drill guide bolt and reinsert the piercing set screw and tighten firmly using a wrench so that the piercing set screw pierces through the remaining material in the pipe. Repeat these steps for each phase clevis as well as the outboard crank and the swing handle clevises. As a final step, you may now remove, if any, packaging or protective material that was included on your insulators on each phase. Congratulations! You have now successfully installed a multi-phase switch bank and are ready for operation.